He called his series 100 Views of Great Tokyo. In fact, he did 109, 110 or more prints than the 100 right. titles suggest. And almost any of them, if you go into them, you can do this kind of a story. You right. can pick out mm -hmm. something different, and not just a different aspect, but something that has different facets, different faces, subtexts and texts. And you can do it with, with all of those. And that's why it pays to look at things carefully. You know, we don't do that in the world anymore, but it really pays to sink in and do this. A lot of times we wonder whether the things that people say about images were in the artist's mind. And I think that what is very interesting about the annotations is that he himself points and tells you in directions of interpretation that are somehow supported by what he's actually writing about it. So we're not completely reading that in. And I think it's an interesting combination of what he chose to to depict how he depicted it, from where he depicted it, and then he, what he himself actually says in a very short um, sentence or two. You don't always need textual verification for factuality of an image. Right. <laughs> you know, I think what we're doing here is commenting on, on the social archaeology we know. Mm -hmm. We don't even ask why he picked this image. But what we know about it says some interesting things, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. What we want to do now, however, is move on to another series of 100 Views of Tokyo, which was initiated also in 1928, the same year that Koizumi did his first print. And it continued for till 1932 for four years, and it involved not one, not two, but eight separate artists. 